What happens after death is perhaps one of the great questions in this life, simply because none of us know the answer. And yet all of us will experience death eventually, so it is a logical question. We live in a culture that is obsessed with extending life, and because of that obsession, we are, in fact, living longer than any time in history. If you ask the question online, what happens when you die, non-Christian sites are numerous, and they are long and complicated and broad and very philosophical and looking for a variety of experiences in a manner that sounds like they want to prolong their life seemingly at any cost. There are fewer Christian sites, and they generally are shorter and clearer and with a call to repent and believe, which should be both comforting and encouraging. So why all the effort to live longer when eternity with God is looming? Short answer, we love the world and all its pleasures and don't want to live without them even as Christians. Somebody once said, this world is as close as a non-Christian will get to heaven, and for a Christian, this is as close as we will get to hell. So it makes sense that one outside of belief in the Creator God would try to squeeze every bit of happiness out of this world that they can. Well, not to ignore the question, but the bigger concern besides my personal happiness would be how can I bring glory to God in this life? So when I face my Creator, He will know me because I've studied who He is through His Word, and I talk to Him all the time through prayer and strive for holiness and obedience. Hebrews 9.27 states, And just as it is appointed for man to die once, and after that comes judgment. I would like to think the judgment part would be more important than the timing, but we are curious people and planners, so the question exists and a natural thing to have questions about. The Bible does not provide specific details about what happens right after we die. It is obvious we will enter into an environment that will be beyond anything we could dream up. It will be the ultimate shock and awe. One of the things that will make heaven so great is we finally feel that we are at our true home. We are not made for this world. We know that those are his, who his, are, his believers will be with God in heaven. Luke 23, 43 recounts the story of the one man that was crucified with him who said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And he said to him, truly, I say to you today, you will be with me in paradise. There was an immediacy in that statement. Death is the separation of body and soul. At the moment of death, believers will be made perfect and cleansed from all unrighteousness. Heaven is fully pure and free from sin. Thus, when God takes us to heaven, he makes us fully presentable by showing us to be blameless before him. Even for believers, the prospect of death is sometimes a fearful thing because death is both certain and uncertain at the same time. We need to be courageous and lay aside our fears in the confidence that we have a God who time after time says to his people, do not be afraid. Isaiah 43 tells us, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they will not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be scorched, nor will the flame burn you. The Bible doesn't answer all the questions about heaven and life after death. It is because we have limitations, and if we understood it all, we would be God, and that would be a terrible plan. However, the Bible certainly does indicate that when we die, we enter immediately into God's presence, and we belong to Christ. This is deeply comforting and wildly exciting at the same time. Well, let me close with this from 1 Corinthians 2, 9 through 11. But as it is written, what no eye has seen, nor ear heard, nor the heart of man imagined, what God has prepared for those who love him, these things God has revealed to us through the Spirit, for the Spirit searches everything, even the depths of God. For who knows a person's thoughts except the spirit of that person which is in him? Which, so also, no one comprehends the thoughts of God except the Spirit of God.